30 minutes as the Bible Answer Crusade team presents another in a series of teachings designed to provide spiritual growth through knowledge of God's Word and practical insights for successful living. Welcome to the Bible Answer Crusade Radio Broadcast. It's the health segment. I am your host, Dr. Keith Lawrence, and welcoming you to the program this morning. Praise God. Beloved, you know, God is so good to us. Look at what just happened in the world. You know, look at what our, or should I say, the president has declared these, open up the government again. So people who were out of work, out of money, couldn't pay their bills, can now receive a check to take care of their bills. You see, God is good, but that just goes to show when you trust man, it's your f- man's hand, you shall fail every time. But we trust God who provides all our needs. He's good. So, beloved, let's open up our program on the health education for these last days with our scripture. And it comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 15, verse 26. And God said, And if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do all that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Beloved, let us approach the throne of mercy in prayer. Father, thank you for waking us up this morning to see another day. You've given us breath in our lungs, movement in our bodies. You've given us a reasonable sense of sanity, and we acknowledge you this morning by making you first, best, last, and everything that we do. We don't ask for tomorrow. We ask for this day. You taught us to pray, Father, to give us this day our daily bread. And that's what we ask for, thanking you for what you've already done and what you're doing and what you will accomplish in our life. We pray for the sick, the homeless, the incarcerated. We pray for those, our children, Father, both wayward and at home. We pray for those single parents and mothers. We pray for those even in our our churches, our law enforcement officers, Lord, they need you more than ever during this time. We pray for the blessing on this radio station. We pray for those who are listening. We ask more of your Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us, Father. We cannot do anything of ourselves, but you've taught us if we would but trust you with all our hearts and lean not to our own understanding and acknowledge you, you would direct our paths. We ask more of the Holy Spirit. Teach us, lead us, guide us, grant that which we so stand in need of rebuke the adversary in of his forms, and we say, Father, help us to be willing, to be willing to do thy will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, beloved, we're continuing our study. We're talking about the three angels' message and health. The three angels' message and health. This is health education for these last days. And as always, if you have any questions or want to request any of the literatures or, or articles what we're talking about, you can get those things and are absolutely free by calling the radio station here at 314-880-0808. That number again is 314-880-0808. And we will get all this literature. We have a a lot of free books. You will be blessed, not only health books, but books on salvation, books on what's happening, current, current events, the great controversy, ministry of healing, and Sunday law. Give us a call. Beloved, what about meat? Okay, Dr. Lawrence, what about meat? 
You see, greater reform should be seen among the people who claim to be looking for the soon appearing of Christ. Health reform is to do among our people a work that it has not yet done. You see, beloved, there are those who ought to be awake to the dangers of eating meat, who are still eating the flesh of animals, thus endangering the physical, mental, and spiritual health. Many who are not now only have converted on this question of eating will eventually leave God's people to walk no more with them. Okay, Doc, you got to tell me a little bit more about this now because I can't start my day without the Mickey D's or the Chiches or the Rib McNugget or the Shrimp McSnake or something. Beloved, you see, was it God's original plan uh, for man to kill animals and use animal meat and produce as food? No. You see, God's original plan was for man to be sustained by the food of the earth, which God created fruit, nuts, and grains. And this is what God is pointing us to in the three angels' messages of Revelation chapter 14. You see, he's pointing us back to creation and him as the creator. The only reason animal meat came into the diet was first, because of sin. Secondly, God allowed it after the flood because the vegetation was destroyed. And thirdly, we have an account in Numbers chapter 11 where the Israelites started moaning and desiring flesh to eat, as they had become accustomed to while they were in Egypt. In Numbers chapter 11, verses 4 and 5, it reads, And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting, and the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who, who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers, the melons, and the leeks, and the onions, and the garlic. But Jesus and his disciples ate fish. <laughs> yes, they did. Which is why this health message is a message particularly for the end times, which we are now living. See, back 2,000 years ago, biblically clean fish and animal meat was far more pure and didn't contain the diseases, toxins, drugs, and growth hormones that we find in the majority of animals and fish today. The earth is so polluted now that no flesh is safe to eat. You ask any health expert or scientist who isn't afraid to speak the truth, and you will be told that the majority of the animals and fish are diseased and full of toxins. I mean, look at the known oil spills during the past 10 years alone. The seas and rivers are now full of deadly chemicals, and these chemicals get soaked into the fish that live in these waters. And the way animals are reared now being fatted up with growth hormones and genetically modified organisms and pumped with antibiotics to combat disease, their flesh is no longer safe to eat. Just look at this quote. This was made back in the mid-1800s. There are but few animals that are free from disease. They have been made to suffer greatly for the warmth of light, pure air, and wholesome food. When they are fattened, they are often confined in close stables and are not permitted to exercise and to have free circulation of air. Many poor animals are left to breathe the poison filth which is left in barns and stables. The lungs will not long remain healthy while inhaling such impurities. Disease is conveyed to the liver and the entire system of the animal is diseased. They are killed and prepared for the market and people eat freely of this poisonous animal food. Much disease is caused in this manner, but people cannot be made to believe that it is the meat they have eaten, which has poisoned their blood and caused their suffering. Many people die of diseases caused wholly by meat eating. Yet the world does not seem to be any wiser. Their blood is highly inflamed, and those who eat of their meat eat poison. Some are not immediately affected, while others are attacked right away. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, that's a pretty strong message, most definitely. Some of these people are attacked with great pain. They die from fever, cholera, or some other unknown disease. Very many animals are sold for the city market, known to be diseased by those who have sold them. And those who buy them are not only ignorant of the matter. Especially in larger cities, this is practiced to a great extent. And meat eaters know not what they are eating diseased animals. Just look at the news. You'll find there's been so many recalls on beef and, 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 and pork and fish 
they recall it. Why? Because it's tainted. And they talk about being tainted with these bacteria and, and these antigens on uh, invading organisms like E. coli, salmonella. God is trying to tell us something, beloved. You see, God's curse is resting upon the animal creation. Many times when meat is eaten, it decays in the stomach and creates disease. Cancers, tumors, and pulmonary diseases are largely caused by meat eating. You see, it, if this happened way back in the 1800s, just imagine the poisonous state of animal flesh today. This is 2019. As a matter of fact, doctors who were educated in health are now attributing many diseases to poor diet and meat eating. You see, meat eating demands a spark, a rise in antibiotic use. You know, there was a phrase that we used to say amongst the medical profession, and we said this sarcastically. You know, it says, if you can't afford your antibiotics when the doctor prescribes them for you, don't worry about it. Go to the fast food restaurants. You'll get some. Now, remember what the first angel said in Revelation 14, verse 7? He said, fear God and give glory to him. What is one way of us giving glory to God? Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20 reads, For ye are bought with the price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. How can we give glory to God in our bodies if we continue to fill it with poisonous flesh and alcohol and refined sugar, making ourselves sick, diseased, and in need of Babylon's pharmaceutical drugs, which in turn make us even worse. No, no, beloved. We need to present our bodies a living sacrifice to God, Romans 12, 1, by reforming our diet and living a healthy lifestyle. After all, a healthy body will help produce a healthy mind and a healthy soul. Hold on. Does God not desire this of his people? Of course he does. See, meat should be totally discarded from our diets now, including alcohol and pharmaceutical drugs. God has shown us many things through the prophet Daniel, good health being one of them. You see in the book of Daniel, chapter 1, verses 8, 12, and 15, it says, But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. And at the end of ten days, their countenances appeared fairer and fatter and flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Beloved friend, a time has come when we as the children of God need to be clear-minded clear-minded to help us discern the great deceptions that Satan is bringing upon this world. He knows his time is short, so he's going to use all his craft and power to deceive God's people during these last days, which is why we need to do our best to build our bodies up to be able to resist disease and sickness so that we can think clearly, discern between right and wrong, and bring glory to God in our lives. Health reform needs to be a part of our Christian growth as we draw nearer and nearer to Christ Jesus and as we enter spiritually into the most holy place of God's heavenly sanctuary, into the very presence of God. Third John 1, 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as thy soul prospereth. You see, there are eight laws of health, I mean for information on how to live healthy lifestyles. You see, people, what are those health laws? Very simple. Nutrition, exercise, water, sunlight, temperance, air, rest, sunshine, and trust in God. By the way, all those eight doctors, they they still make house calls. And you don't need Obamacare, you don't need Trump aid, you don't need Medicare, Medicist, all that stuff. God has given each one of us health assurance. We don't have to depend on health insurance because his promises are sure. But Dr. Lawrence, come on now. I, I know some verses, man, that, that, that says we can eat whatever we want. Sure. Let's look at a couple of them. These are the verses used against the health message. There are a number of Bible verses that many Christians use to support their meat eating. 
including biblically unclean meat, and which they use against the health measures. Let's examine these verses in question. Number one, it's found in Matthew chapter 15, verse 11, which says, Not that which goes into the mouth defileth the man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth the man. If we simply take the whole chapter in context, it can be easily seen that Jesus is talking about is the Pharisees rules on eating with unwashed hands. And although Jesus is not saying that eating with dirty hands is okay, he is merely pointing out that the Pharisees place more importance on these ritual rules than he did on love. So Jesus is teaching a heart issue and that what comes from the heart is that which really makes a person evil, not what goes into the stomach. And then how about this verse that comes from Acts chapter 10, verses 10 through 13, which reads, And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending upon him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill, and eat. This is such a well-known, misunderstood piece of scripture that many Christians use to validate their eating of unclean animals. And yet the meaning of the vision is clearly given within the context. Now, let's say the vision did mean that we can now eat anything and everything, anything crawling, creeping, flying, stretching, rolling across the floor. Shall we now start eating dogs, cats, rats, horses, and such like? Do Christians eat such things? Of course not. And yet they use this verse to support their eating of pigs and other biblically unclean flesh. Peter even said to himself after the vision, no, 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 not so, Lord, for I, I have not eaten anything that is common or unclean. He was shocked and troubled by the vision. Why? Because he couldn't believe that God now pronounces all unclean animals and insects as okay to eat. So what does this vision really mean? You see, Acts 10, verses 28, 34, and 35. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come into one of another nation. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. See, through the vision, God was basically showing Peter that all people who fear God and do his will are accepted clean. So why did God use a vision to do something with eating? Maybe because, as verse 10 says, Peter was very hungry before he had the vision. Also in the vision, God spoke three times, saying that what he had cleansed, Peter should not call common. Why three times? Because three non-Jews then came to see Peter to take him to Cornelius. Interesting. One of my favorites. Number three, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 4 says, To every creature of God is good, and nothing to refuse, if it be received with thanksgiving. And people use that to say, I can put anything on my plate. As long as I pray over, I'm going to chow down and enjoy my meal. But what is it actually saying? Again, if we read the context, we can see that in verse 1 to 3, it says, In the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats. Some say that this is speaking about the Adventist church. <laughs> but no, Paul is saying that these individuals teaching to abstain from meats also teach not to marry. The Adventist church does not forbid marriage, but rather promotes marriage between a man and a woman. On the other hand, the Roman Catholic Church does not forbid eating foods on certain holiday celebra celebrations and forbids marrying through its institutions of the nuns and priests. Please also notice this important point. The word meats in verse 3 simply means food. When the Bible is talking about animal meat, it says flesh. But when talking about non-flesh food, it uses the word meat. For example, 
every in Genesis 1, 29, God tells Adam and Eve what he has created for them to eat. Every herb bearing seed and fruit of the tree yielding seed. And what does God call this food in Genesis 1, 29? Meat. So going back to verse 3 of Timothy above, what meat has God created to be received with thanksgiving? Food of the earth. Because God did not create animals to be killed and eaten. That was not his plan. Beloved, we should study God's word and ask him for wisdom. The Bible says in James 1, 5, if any man has any questions, let him ask of God who give it to all liberally and upbraid us not. Which means God will answer your question. He didn't say ask Joel, Ralph, Bill, ask your pastor. He said ask your cousin, uncle, elder, nephew, or see what the newsman got to say, or the scientists. He said ask him in faith and he will teach you and tell you if you are sincere. Also, did you notice that in verse 4 it says every creature of God is good? The word creature simply means thing founded or created thing. So if creature in this verse means anything other than natural products of the earth which God had created for us to eat, then people will have to include every crawling thing upon the face of the earth, including humans. We're creatures, so it's okay to eat humans. So is it okay to eat rats, spiders, dogs, cats, and people? Is cannibalism now approved? After all, Mark sixteen fifteen says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The only logical conclusion is that Paul is talking about those who would forbid the eating of foods that God originally created for our diet. And then we have 1 Timothy 4 and 5. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. So put whatever on your plate, pray over it, and chow down. How is food sanctified or made holy for us to eat? Not just by prayer, which many Christians seem to believe, but rather by the word of God and prayer. Now, where in the Bible is unclean meat like pig, camel, mice, bats, eagles sanctified? Where, where, where would you find that, beloved? The Bible doesn't teach us. So let's be aware of what it's actually saying. So, beloved, the health message from the three angels in this last days we're living in is specifically for us because we need to know these things to be healthy. As my time is winding down, we're going to continue this by God's grace next Sunday. And as always, beloved, if you have any questions about anything that's being said, don't just take my word. The Bible says test all things, prove all things, apply scripture with scripture, and God will tell you to call the radio station, 314-880-0808. And we can give you all these articles that you're hearing so you can read and know for yourself. The Bible talks about the Bereans, which were no more nobler because they went back to see if these things were so. So, beloved, anything that Dr. Lawrence tells you, don't take Dr. Lawrence's word for it. Take God's word. He doesn't fail. I'd like to leave this with you. It says God's law is built into every cell, nerve, and fiber. Violations of that law includes consequences, whether willingly, ignorantly, are presumptuous. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfy thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. And ye shall serve the Lord thy God. And ye shall serve the Lord thy God. He shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Beloved, trust God. And again, trust God. So until next time, Maranatha and Maranatha.
But somehow things didn't come around Confused 